Hi, I'm Sarah Fry. Welcome to Patent Pod. You may not realize it, but computer science is everywhere. It impacts nearly every aspect of our lives, and it's rapidly growing in Pennsylvania. There are thousands of good paying jobs available across the Commonwealth in CS. Today on Patent Pod, we'll explore how CS education can put students on the road to victory with Andrew Cromer, a data engineer for the Philadelphia Eagles. See what I did there? All right, Andrew, it is so nice to meet you. I'm sure you get this question a lot, but what exactly do you do as a data engineer for the Eagles? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, so data engineer, I know a lot of people kind of go around that term, data analyst, data scientist. Uh, I think unless you're working in a pretty particular tech field, they're pretty interchangeable. Um, so for me, uh, my role as a data engineer initially started with just working with the architecture of building a data warehouse at the Eagles, which has been a big project for us, mostly focusing on fan data. Um, but also just to deal with concerns around privacy, deal with efficiency among departments and a bunch of other things like that. Uh, because our department's relatively new, I also wear a lot of hats. So while I am a data engineer, I can also be an analyst, I can also be a data scientist to an extent. Um, and so that can be anything from coding some automated solutions for our accounting department to profiling uh, fan data for our corporate department to you know really whatever pops up that week. Uh, so. It's been pretty exciting. Uh, it's been a new field for me, um, but there's always a lot of interesting stuff going on in data. So I, want, I imagine that you, as a small child, you didn't dream of being a data engineer for, your, for hopefully your favorite football team. Could you backtrack for us a little bit and tell us about your journey in computer science? How did you get to where you are today? And maybe what were some pivotal moments along that journey? Sure, uh, so I think it's easy for me to say I'm not necessarily a typical uh, data science person, but I don't know that that's true given how many people seem to be getting into this field sort of later in their careers. Uh, I have actually been in academic research most of my professional life. So uh, during college, I worked in a neurology lab studying uh, neurodegenerative disorders. Uh, I've worked on cancer therapies. I've worked in genetics lab, I've worked in a clinical genetics lab, I worked in a COVID testing lab. Uh, so in some ways, uh, I've kind of, I like to say I've sort of been a data guy my entire life, um, because at the end of the day, most research science is all about telling stories with data. Um, so I think I grew interested in getting a little more technical with that when I was in the uh, clinical genetics lab. Um, I was processing huge amounts of data um, specifically for, you know, clinicians uh, in hospitals who really just wanted kind of a yes or no test result. And then we had all of this data that I knew from my research experience other people would be fascinated by, but I just didn't really know how to process it. I didn't know the best way to get it to them. So that's really what got me into uh, trying to take classes in data science. Uh, I really wanted to expand my ability to understand and also tell stories with the, the data I was seeing. Um, and so that's, you know, ultimately what got me to the classes. Um, after that, I sort of cast a wide net looking for professional options and the Eagles just seemed like the most fun, honestly. Uh, so while I will say uh, industry-wise, it's been a big jump, uh, kind of like I was saying, data is data. Uh, so I still feel like in some ways I'm doing similar work just with a different set of tools. What were, um, so I, you know, thinking about that kind of pivot, if you will, what were, what do you think, especially in your K-12 background, maybe opened up your eyes to that? And I love the way that you put it, like telling stories with data. Were there certain classes that you kind of were leaning into or some some skills that you were practicing that were just enjoyable for your for your own pursuits? Yeah, I mean, K through 12, I, I was still very much a science guy. I think a lot of that was inspired by my mom. Uh, she's always worked in science. She's a PhD in microbiology. She worked in uh, cancer research for a long time. So uh, I really kind of admired uh, her background there. And I always thought that was something cool to aspire to. 
uh, K through 12, you know, I, I love chemistry. I love biology. Um, I took every chance I could to kind of take the nerdier things that were available <laughs> to me there. Um, I did take a really quick programming class uh, in high school, but when I was in high school, um, it wasn't really integrated. So it was kind of just this informal, you know, let's try to make a tic-tac-toe game or something like that. But, um, you know, I, what was really cool to me about that was just seeing sort of the power of what you can do with coding. Uh, even if I wasn't great at it, admittedly, at that time, uh, it was just neat to see that, you know, you can still be creative in something that I think a lot of people consider more sort of technical, um, I don't know, I, I guess objective. Like there's still room to be sort of make it your own, be more creative about it. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the way that you kind of describe that. And that's something that we have a lot of conversations with, with educators and other stakeholders is that not only are there tons of career opportunities and they aren't all labeled computer science, right? Even like you said, you wear multiple hats and have on paper have one role, but also that it's not just all the technical, right? That, that change that you made about telling, telling stories with data and who else could get excited about the same things you were getting excited about. Um, speaks to that, and I am fascinated by that. I'm wondering, um, you know, not to, not that you're out there searching for other opportunities. Uh, I'm sure you, things are pretty good for you this year, at least, with, with yeah. what's going on in the organization. But I'm wondering, um, since you have put your CS and your data knowledge and skills to use in so many different ways, what other applications are fascinating to you right now? What is it that you're following, or you're like, wow, that's awesome that other people are doing that? Yeah, I mean, I guess the sort of uh, near-term answer for me is uh, just gearing up on visualizations. That's been a big thing for us. Uh, we're currently trying to develop a number of different apps in-house just to help different departments, uh, because right now a lot of it's been done, you know, in kind of a more old-school way. Like, it, it works, um, but I think there's a lot of efficiencies that, you know, anyone regardless of their ability and data um, can appreciate, you know, being able to log in something, click a few buttons and say, oh, here were the merch sales from this weekend, or, you know, here's how this fan demographic is tracking over the past couple of years. Um, so really just that kind of, uh, I think we always talk about the democratization of data, just making it accessible to everyone, regardless of their uh, understanding their buy-in, uh, anything like that. I think that's really a big project for us internally this year. Um, more broadly, uh, you know, there's always the conversation about AI and machine learning, and I think that's really dominated the headlines right now. Um, that's something that we kind of got to dip our toes in in uh, my program, which uh, we honestly had a lot of fun with. I mean, I was just shocked at how accessible it was, you know, to do uh, to hop in on something with using a machine learning algorithm and get a readout that, you know, maybe is not the most sophisticated thing, but still you've made a machine learning model. Um, and I think the fact that that technology is accessible is really interesting. Um, and it's something that, you know, there, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, trepidation as to how it's going to change everything. But I do think that, you know, the more people understand about it, the more useful it will be and the more we can use it for something constructive rather than, you know, spooky. Not to end on a spooky note, for sure. Um, we, we'd, <laughs> we'd hate to do that. Um, I'm going to throw an extra question, and I hope you don't mind. I'm wondering, you know, you talked about, like, feeling like you were into the nerdy stuff, and we joke about that um, with, you know, some stereotypes, both positive and negative, about, uh, about math and computer science and STEM. What do you think, uh, especially maybe if folks just heard you say, hi, I'm Andrea, this is what I do, what do you think people get wrong about the structure or the day-to-day -day about your job, whether it's how you work with other people or just the effort you put in? I'm just curious, are there misconceptions that you would like to squash for, for everybody out there about data science and computer science? Yeah, I think to me, the biggest thing I get from friends is, you know, I, I tell them I did this coding boot camp and now I, you know, work full time in this tech job and they're like, oh, I could never do that. Like, oh, like I don't have the brain for that. Um, but I, I do think it's very accessible, you know, and, and I think part of that can be just kind of striking out on your own, looking into it. Part of that can be uh, joining a group of people who maybe understand it better than you. And so I, I feel like a lot of people are, uh, 
not to go back to spooked, but like a little spooked by uh, anything on the technical side. But um, kind of going back to what I said earlier, like it can be fun, it can be creative. There are different ways of getting into it that don't require you to be glued to a monitor for 10 hours a day looking at like the matrix code streaming down uh, on your screen. Um, and I think just kind of giving people the ability to dip their toe in to kind of really understand even at a basic level, like what it means to be working with data, what it means to be coding, um, I, I think kind of demystifies it uh, if they're able to get that perspective. What, um, what's been the highlight of your work recently? What's something that you've had an aha moment that you're allowed to reveal and you, you just, it made your day? I think just kind of going back to the visualization thing, like I <laughs> I think in part because I, I've been really deep into data, like I would say I'm, I kind of got a little more intense into it when I was in science, but now because so much of it is about the storytelling, you know, I just put together what I thought was a pretty basic uh, Tableau dashboard. So, you know, just like a way of interacting with data, seeing uh, filters, seeing kind of a dynamic screen change based on years or populations or things like that. Uh, and I brought it to someone in our executive team and I said, you know, this was at the end of a meeting. It wasn't about this dashboard. And I said, here's just something quick I put together. And she was really into it. Like, it, you know, it, it seemed like something that was really cool. It's like, oh, I have a new toy. I have a new way of exploring this. Like, um, and so I, it just kind of made me realize like people, there really is sort of a hunger for this. Um, I think, again, just giving people access to this, empowering people to use data, um, but also, you know, kind of having fun with it, um, enjoying the exploration of it, I think is really key to a lot of the kind of work that we do here. So to wrap up, and I love that, ending on that, the, the excitement that you had and the excitement that that other person had looking at, you know, something that you kind of just put together. Um, it's inspiring and it gets me excited, especially um, when I think about how much work is being put in to getting more students uh, access to and engagement in computer science and data science. So I usually pitch a question about maybe strategies or tips to, to wrap up our, our episodes. So I'm going to put you on the spot. What, based on your experience, what ideas, what strategies, what advice would you give to educators, to parents, to the community about supporting students in pursuing computer science and data science? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing for me, uh, even as an adult, was just having someone there who uh, supported me kind of along the path, um, understanding it well. So if you can, even if you have someone who's not, you know, a superstar at coding or, you know, has an incredible background in CS, just having someone who's supportive, who's willing to kind of take the time and look at it, um, you know, bounce ideas off and ideally get you into a broader community of people who, you know, are maybe at your level above, below, just having those conversations is huge. Um, and I think, especially for kids, like I'm sure you've talked about this, but like scratch is great, you know, I think that's a really easy, kind of obvious, fun way of getting kids into the really basic ideas about programming. Um, but at the same time, you can do really complex stuff with Scratch. Um, and so I think that's a really interesting uh, way of pushing forward. But again, like community is so big. Uh, so I, I think um, I would say that's the largest thing, just like supporting kids and getting them in touch with other people, because it really is just growing every year as a community. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. Um, that's a, a, a brilliant segue into a few uh, teasers or tips that I have. Um, if you are in interested in learning more about computer science education in Pennsylvania, including resources for curriculum uh, like Scratch, or uh, getting involved with our virtual community of practice to, to form your own community of support, those links are available in our show notes. Um, I'd also like to thank again Andrew for being our special guest today, as well as our producer, John Ragsdale. And to our audience members, I hope that you'll come back and join me for another episode of Patent Pod very soon. Thank you.